Welcome back to Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. We're getting set for a brand new calendar year and we're telling you how you should be investing your money. We have Firoz Aziz, the Deputy CEO at Anandrati Wealth, who's here with us. Uh, Firoz, um, I wanted to check with you on when j someone from, you know, a Gen Z investor is looking to put their money between large, small and mid caps. From where do you think the maximum alpha can be generated? Yes, so Sonia, this uh, question is very, very important, a question. And if you analyze data, uh, without any biases, uh, look at the one thing when, a, when you're buying an active fund, you're worried whether your fund will outperform. That's the first question you'll have. That's in the future you'll get an answer to it, not before you invest. And after it is there, how much did I outperform? Mm. So one is the odds of outperforming itself. In a small cap are 47%. In a mid cap is 46. In a large cap category is 37. So the odds of winning are low in a large cap. Then next comes, how much do you win when you actually win? Mm. Uh, in a small cap, that's where the stark, stark difference is, is 12.88%. So the small cap scheme, which actually has a 47% odds of beating Nifty, mm. when it so does, it beats by 12.8%. Okay. In a large cap fund, the probability of beating Nifty is about 37%. Mm. When it so does, it only beats by 3%. Mm. So that's why a person who has time at hand, which is a Gen Z for sure, should definitely have larger proportions in small cap. Okay, I have a follow up here. At this point in time, uh, do you think that's a good strategy? Because now the narrative is that large caps will start to outperform in 2024. So for someone who's investing now, should their view change? I would uh, no, say no, okay. because you're again speaking of long term when it comes to Gen Z, that's point one. Point two is that when you're going to be systematically investing, it's very unlikely that the Gen Z is sitting on five lakhs to invest. Mm. He's going to be doing, he or she is going to be doing 1,000 a month. Mm. The more the volatility, the better will be the averaging for him. Mm. So you don't have to be worried about a fall because the next installment is going to be by bought cheaper. Mm. If it goes up, you still have a good news that the installments which have already gone in. So I'm not too worried about small cap valuation. If you look at small cap valuation also, there is a stock in small cap index with 9 P. Mm. There is also a stock with 200 P. Okay. So painting them all in the same brush is too making it too simplistic. Okay. So, so I think I'm not too worried. So the basic point is if you are a young, if you're a person in the category of 20 to 30, it makes more sense for you to invest in small caps rather than large caps over the longer term, right? So put larger allocation to that. Got it. What are the funds to invest into? This is the most common question. I'm sure you also get asked this a lot. What are the top, say, five or six funds that you would recommend investing into in 2024? Yeah, there are several funds you can invest in, but when it comes to buying a mutual fund basket, your expectations should be clear. You will always, when you buy six schemes, one or two will be turning duds mm. over the next one year. If your expectation is all six are going to be uh, a strike right, you're not buying a Sachin Tendulkar, mm. okay? So you have to remember that. That's Having said which, you have, if you look at uh, large cap category, I would definitely buy it. Franklin uh, Blue Chip, mm. that's one, uh, which is uh, which is managed by now Janki Raman, who's the CIO. Okay. It's a smaller scheme, 7,000 crore scheme. Mm. So my belief is that it has the potential and the agility required to beat Nifty in the future. Mm. The past performance doesn't show up that good, mm. but I'm still saying that. Now you have this DSP Equity Opportunities Fund, which is a large and mid-cap scheme. Mm. Uh, when you look at DSP, I think their strength uh, from Vinit Samre's standpoint, which is mid-cap, uh, bottom-up, uh, smelling businesses much before. I think that's what comes to your rescue here. Kotak Emerging Equities is, uh, of course, uh, was managed by Pankaj Tibriwal, yes. who is now on the way out. And Harsh uh, is a person who's going to be taking it over. I was going to so. ask you about that, you know, because Pankaj had this uh, penchant for picking up stocks, which were multi-baggers, right? I mean, he, he had some of the best multi-baggers in his list. Uh, now that he's on his way out, do you think the fund could suffer in any way? See, I don't uh, believe that it can okay. because Nilesh Shah, who's the CEO of the business, if he's a technical CIO in the past, mm. their capability is very different. You, if you make a general manager as the CEO of an asset management company, the fund's performance suffers. Mm. Now, if you see HDFC, Navneet Monot has been a CIO. Mm. Bala has been a CIO. And you see Nilesh Shah himself has a very, very good sense of equity. Mm. So I personally think Harsh Upadhyay with Nilesh mm. uh, managing a, a 20 well, a large scheme. It's not a small scheme That's that right. Pankaj stock picking could have helped so much. If it was a 200 crore scheme and Pankaj was buying multi-baggers, then the performance was attributed to that small uh, scheme. Because it's a large scheme, I think it'll have the attention from relation. There's one, I don't know whether I'll call it a misconception, but there's one conception that uh, the larger the scheme, the tougher it is to outperform the benchmark. Would you agree with that? I will completely agree. In closed doors, most fund managers tell me this. <laughs> and mathematically, 
very few have been able to defy this logic, one being Chirag Setalwad. Mm. For Chirag Setalwad has been, irrespective of the size, has been able to generate immense alpha in a small cap scheme. Mm. So much so that I had to put two people to do a research of why this happened. Mm. So I concur with your conception. Uh, but you're still recommending these large schemes uh, for Gen Z? See, it becomes difficult. It doesn't become impossible. Okay. So, I, relatively, given a choice, if I were a fund manager, give me a 2,000 crore scheme or a 20,000 crore scheme, the odds of me beating the benchmark is higher in a 2,000 crore. Okay, if we can just get the schemes up uh, back on uh, the screen over here. So, we were going through some of them, right, that you like. There's DSP, there's... Uh, Kotak uh, Emerging Equity Fund. Tell us a little bit about Invesco. This fund has done very well. Just look at the performance, five years, 40%. Do you think it can replicate that? I think it can, but not 40%. Yeah. That's a little, uh, because the, the, the point also has uh, a trough of small cap as the beginning point. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at Tahir Bacha, who's the CIO, and he's managing the scheme, it's just about a 1,400 crore scheme. That's when you are having a mix of a large scheme, you have a small scheme as well, and in a small cap scheme, you want some 1,400 crores, 1,500 crore, with the CIO paying attention. Mm -hmm. And Tahir Basha, when he was in Motilal Oswal also, has got a great track record to smell businesses and do some justice to the money. So I think agility is very high, and Tahir Basha is a CIO, and he has created credibility enough uh, to manage a small scheme. Okay, very quickly, any other schemes that you would recommend, apart from the ones that you suggested here? So if you look at, uh, from an SBI contrast standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, that's one scheme managed by Dinesh, which has a complementary nature. Okay. Uh, if I have, because SBI is missed there, so I'll say SBI large and mid-cap or SBI contra can be uh, included in the scheme because uh, SBI is the largest asset management company. I love the way Vasan displays courage, who's the mm -hmm. CIO, R. Srinivasan, displays courage. Uh, I think that's a very important attribute of fund manager, not just the analytics, but the courage to act on his conviction okay. exists. And you also like quant funds. I think uh, Sandeep has been one of the biggest success stories in the mutual fund space in the last couple of years, but still good to go for more? Absolutely. See, w what is so different about Sandeep Tandon is he comes from a treasury mindset, yeah. not a fund manager mindset. Uh, as far as I have understood his mathematical models, last year we proved, approved his scheme in our portfolio, so we had to go through a lot of research. Uh, momentum, risk and price. Yeah. All these are very, very good decision-making criteria mathematically which support him, uh, which I think has proved very well and I'm very, very confident that uh, he's been able to generate alpha. Of course, that's fact but I think I would definitely extrapolate that alpha in the future as well. Okay, Firoz, very, very informative episode. Thank you so much for joining us and Happy New Year to you and your entire team at Anand Rati. Hope you continue to do uh, well for yourself. This has been a great year uh, for your business and hope that continues. Thank you for your wishes and wish you the same. All right, with that, it's curtains down on Smart Money. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great weekend.